The St. Louis Cardinals don't care about what's being trendy. They don't care about being the popular kid in MLB. They're just going to do things their own way. And uh, yeah, it works. They always seem to be one step ahead of everybody and have the answers to questions that your team might not even be asking yet. And that's because the Cardinals have the Cardinal way. In 23 seasons since 2000, the Cardinals have only had one losing season in 2007. They've made the playoffs 16 times and won their division 11 times, making it to the World Series four times, and they've won twice. So I think it's about time to expose the secrets of the Cardinal way and figure out how they've been doing this for so long. For one, it helps to start that on this 2000 team, they had players like a 36 year old Mark McGuire, who at this point had eaten all of the steroids. You had outfielders, Jim Edmonds and JD Drew and starting pitcher, Rick Ankiel. Yeah, that's the dude that was a starter before he got the yips and then just decided to be a really good outfielder instead. But now throughout the years, they've been able to maintain their success because they've had other top players like Albert Pujols, who they drafted in the 13th round in 1999, spent 12 seasons in St. Louis, winning the 2001 Rookie of the Year, making nine all-star teams, and only winning three MVPs, that's whatever. Third baseman Scott Rowland, who they traded for in July of 2002, five and a half seasons with the team. He made four all-star teams and was a three-time gold glover. Starting pitcher Chris Carpenter, who they signed as a relatively low-level free agent in December of 2002, nine seasons in St. Louis, a three-time all-star, three times top five in Cy Young voting and won the 2005 Cy Young. Outfielder Matt Holliday, who they traded for in July of 2009, four-time All-Star in seven and a half seasons in St. Louis. Catcher Yadier Molina, who they drafted in the fourth round in 2000, only played 19 seasons in St. Louis, a 10-time All-Star and nine-time Gold Glover. His battery mate, starting pitcher Adam Wainwright, who was traded to St. Louis in December of 2003, going on to his 18th season with the team, a three-time All-Star and four times has finished top three in Cy Young voting. And more recently here, you have first baseman Paul Goldschmidt, who they traded for in December of 2018, four seasons with the team so far. This last season, he was an all-star and won the MVP. And across the infield, you have third baseman Nolan Arenado, who they traded for in February of 2021, completely fleecing the Rockies, by the way. So far in his two seasons with the team, he's only been an all-star and gold glover in both of them. And oh yeah, finished third in MVP voting behind Goldie this last year. But now you notice a trend here with these top players for the Cardinals. Uh, None of them are guys that they went out in free agency and spent a whole bunch of money to get. So if you're a team that's not spending big money in free agency and you're really just developing and trading, then you got to nail the draft because how else are you going to get these prospects that you can either develop or then trade off? So with this in mind, how have the Cardinals approached the draft? Well, since 2000, they've drafted 23 pitchers and 17 position players and gone with 24 college players versus 16 high schoolers. So it's not really surprising then to know that the biggest position group that the Cardinals have drafted is college pitchers. Degrees win championships, kids stay in school. And you have third baseman outfielder Jordan Walker, outfielder Dylan Carlson, infielder Nolan Gorman, starting pitchers Jack Flaherty and Jake Woodford, and reliever Zach Thompson, who are all former St. Louis first round picks. So yeah, they've done pretty all right with that. So now we know how the Cardinals go ahead and build their roster, but what specifically are they looking for in these players to know that they're gonna fit the Cardinal way? During their run, the Cardinals have had the third best WRC plus in baseball, mainly because of a really good approach at the plate, focused a little bit more on not striking out versus getting walked. Their strikeout percentage has been third in baseball, walk percentage ninth, and contact percentage sixth, which has led them to the fourth best average and on-base percentage during this time. Power, on the other hand, is the, not a huge deal to them. Isolated power has been 14th, homers per fly ball has been 15th, exit velo 22nd, and hard hit percentage 20th. So what the Cardinals are looking for in their hitters, more than anything, is a professional approach at the plate. Something that's gonna give the hitter a chance, whether it's just putting the ball in play, taking the walk if it's there, not striking out mainly. And if you happen to hit a home run or two, then 
cool. Now for their pitching, if we start with the rotation, their ERA has been second, but their FIP has been fifth. And going a little bit deeper, their ERA minus has been third, while their FIP minus has been 10th. And this difference is due to the fact that their strikeout percentage has been 20th in baseball. Their pitchers are more focused on limiting the amount of walks that they give up, where they've been seventh in walk percentage. But more than anything, they're gonna keep the ball out of the air. They have been first in ground ball percentage, second in fly ball percentage, and the second lowest launch angle. So for their starting pitchers now, they're gonna find guys that are fine with pitching to contact, as long as that means they're getting a ton of these weak ground balls that are fairly easy outs. You're not gonna give up a lot of walks doing that, and you know what? You're not gonna get a whole lot of strikeouts either, but pff, who needs them? Now we see the same kind of split with their bullpen, where their ERA has been seventh and their FIP has been 14th. Their ERA minus has been 11th and their FIP minus has been 23rd. And again, this is due to the fact that their strikeout percentage is now 22nd, but their walk percentage is up to 15th. So we see a very similar strategy of attacking the zone and getting a lot of weak contact, but the relievers can't get the ball on the ground quite as much, and that's why we see their numbers up just a little bit more than the starters. But the Cardinals don't care about pitching to contact. Go ahead and hit it. You know why? Because we love D. Fence. Defense. In the time that we've had these advanced numbers, the Cardinals have ranked first in defensive runs saved, sixth in framing, fifth in outs and runs above average, and Fangraphs has had them as the seventh best defense in baseball. So these are the secrets to the Cardinal way. Hitters that are gonna put together really good at bats and give themselves a chance, a pitching staff that's gonna get you to hit the ball pretty weakly, and the defense behind them that's gonna make every play. What else have I missed? Anything else that you know about the Cardinal way, comment all of that down below. Now, another team that's had a ton of success by following their own model of doing things has been the Houston Astros, but that kind of comes with the whole sign stealing thing too and everything. So it, it, it it's complicated, but to find out more about that, check out this video right here. And as always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next one.